you guys round two trying to get this video up the first time something was wrong with the formatting and the audio got all horrible so i apologize for that um let's hope this works because i had to redo the entire video which is a lot of work so if you could give me a like that would be great because i'm feeling a little bit defeated i'm not the most tech savvy person so hopefully i get better at this as they go along but i really appreciate you guys bearing with me and being along for the ride <laughs> I'm Jess. I'm a nurse and a mom with a passion for flipping furniture. I'm using that passion to pay my way to gain my master's in nursing. So join me in this journey and let's flip this script. Welcome back guys. Today we are doing a, I guess part one of two furniture flips because this is originally um, a hutch top that I got from, I bought off a girlfriend. And sorry, excuse my kids. This is the second time I'm doing this video so they're a little sick of this um so i ended up taking the middle part of the hutch out and i'm just removing the glass uh, out of all the panels actually but the middle one i want to replace with a piece of mdf which i thought i had footage of but apparently i don't so i just traced the size of the glass um, on a piece of quarter inch mdf that i had left over from our house rentals from when i built our cabinets so So after removing about 10 million staples, I was able to move on to the side doors and remove these panels of glass, which was actually extremely difficult. Not only because there were so many staples, but also because it was freezing. I live in Canada and my garage is not heated. So I either had to work with freezing cold hands or with gloves and that did not work well considering everything was sliding out of my hands, but by some miracle, I was able to get it done. After that I cleaned the whole piece you can see the um, new middle panel that I added with quarter inch MDF and I just secured that with staples and here I am I've already cleaned the piece with crud cutter and a damp towel and then went over it with a dry microfiber towel before I started scuff sanding I just used a 220 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander this is a laminate piece so unfortunately there was no real wood to salvage here um, so i'm just scuffing it in order for my primer and my paint to adhere this is a step that i would recommend never skipping even if it's a pain in the butt it is so critical after this i wiped off the dust with a microfiber towel again i just get them at the dollarama you can get a package of like six really good ones for, I don't know, like three bucks. So that's just what I use as opposed to like a tack cloth. Sometimes I use tack cloths, but 
I just kind of like something that I can reuse over and over again. this project I chose coal black from fusion mineral paint I was finally able to get my hands on this after so long um, we've had lots of shortages just due, the, due to the pandemic and also recently there was some severe flooding in British Columbia here in Canada I'm in Alberta but because most of the imports that we receive come through British Columbia it was a huge delay in a lot of products and if you're the praying type, I would send up a prayer or a thought for the people impacted by those floods because they were absolutely hor oh, just awful. And right before Christmas, I know a lot of those people are still struggling. So awkward segue into um, priming. I don't really know how to transition smoothly from talking about a natural disaster to talking about priming. So please excuse my social awkwardness and know that uh, I mean, no disrespect. I actually, my heart is with everyone affected by the floods as well as so many other natural disasters in the world right now. Um, as you know, I'm a nurse and so furniture flipping and making over these pieces has become a huge part of my therapy. Um, I haven't really shared my story, but right before I went back to work after mat leave, I had a really traumatic experience and I actually almost died. And I have pretty bad PTSD after that. So painting my pieces has become a huge part of my therapy, not only to fund my further education, but has really helped my mental health. And um, if you guys have had something like that, that's kind of helped you through the pandemic or just difficult seasons in your life, I would love to hear about it. Um, I think it's, I think it's so important to normalize the struggles in mental health and just to admit that a lot of us are struggling right now. It's been a really hard couple of years and I don't know, I would love to hear how you guys are, you know, coping through it. And I hope everyone is doing okay. If you are struggling, please know that you're not alone and I'm here for you. Even if it's just a comment, I will try to comment back and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't know how to segue out of such a deep topic into something lighter. So next up, I am just using a brush, a zebra brush and a roller to apply the first coat of um, the cold black paint. Sometimes I just love using a brush, particularly when my anxiety is bad or I'm feeling low. I just find that the hands-on technique really is therapeutic to me. Something about the repetitive nature of using the brush really helps me cope. Also, I absolutely hate my <laughs> paint sprayer and it usually adds more stress to my day rather than therapies so um i asked santa for a new one so hopefully hint hint hubby he heard that uh, request loud and clear um no but i do i do like the old school brush and roller technique and i do actually have a method that i use to make it look almost flawless almost like it was sprayed on if that's something that you guys want to see in a later video let me know it'll be pretty short but i'll just show you what i do to get um, rid of brush lines, particularly in dark colors like this coal black. I did find this coal black was quite thin compared to other fusion mineral paint products that I have used in the past, just the shade. Um, so I did do three coats, but I was blown away by the finish. This color was worth the wait to work with because I absolutely love the matte finish. It's a self-leveling paint and I am definitely in love with it, which is bittersweet because it is more expensive than um, some of the hardware store paints, but wow, does it ever, it has a beautiful payoff. 
And yeah, so <laughs> I don't know what I'm lecturing my son about, but <laughs> next I moved on to the faux rattan, which rattan is really hard to come by, I'm finding, and it's super expensive. So I wanted to kind of mimic the look while on budget and also use things that I already had in my house. So what this is, is just an Ikea, um, the thing that you put under rugs to prevent them from slipping. So I just cut that into pieces and doubled up to make it look thicker. And I painted it with a Algonquin from Fusion Mineral Paint Wash to get this kind of natural material look. And I'm just stapling it in with the worst staple gun in the world. This staple gun ended up kicking the bucket in this project. So I ended up going just to the hardware store and getting just the, not the electric ones, just the, like the man powered kind, which was way better. It allowed me to use smaller staples. Um, when I was using this nail gun, it actually split one of the, one of the frames of the wood. So I ended up having to re-glue that, repair it, wait for it to dry, repaint it. So, um, <laughs> I didn't get footage of that because I was actually so annoyed because when I had the clamp on for the frame, it was just a minor crack, but I pushed my garage door opener closed and it ended up hitting the clamp and then further cracking the frame. So I had to rebuild that whole frame and I was too annoyed to film that because I felt so silly for not realizing that the clamp would be in the way. But anyways, next I added some legs that I loved from Amazon just to give it a more high-end um, modern look. But of course I forgot to film that, so <laughs> Ugh, I'm sorry guys. I was just kind of a, all over the place this month and... My kids have caught every cold under the sun, it seems like. Um, next, I just cleaned up the old hardware because they did like the look of it. Just with some barkeeper's best friend and put that back on. And here's the finished product. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's exactly how I pictured it. And the kind of faux rattan reminds me of um, just like wood grain. And every angle that you look at looks a little bit different. You can see some just dust on this piece. And it's because it is so cold. It's like minus 25 degrees Celsius right now. So I cannot use a wet cloth or it will just instantly freeze, which I did unfortunately do on the glass. And it just turned into ice, icicle city, unfortunately. So I'll have to clean it when it's a little bit warmer. And as always guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and we'll see you on the next flip.